Hello class, um, this is your instructor, um, Huma. Uh, my name is right here. And the reason I'm recording this video for you is to show you how to use your practice code for your assignment submission. So as you can see, we are on the um, practice code page, the first page that you see after you log into it. And um, you always wanna go to your upper left corner of the page. Um, click on my courses and learning plans and then you can see that you have module assessments I don't know which order you will see them in but this is what I see when I open my account <clears throat> and then you have module 1 module 2 and module 3 okay so the first thing that you want to do or the difference between the two actually I should explain that first is remember you have 200 cases in each module module 1 200 module 2 200 and then module 3 300 after you finish your module 1 200 cases you're gonna you're gonna attempt the assessment it's like an exam after you do the lessons for module 1 you finish your exam and it will not um, give you any help or any rationales or anything but it will give you a grade which you have to pass with a 70 percent um, i've sent you a video before with more details but so i'm not going to explain any further here um, the assignment has to be um, the assignment submission every week you have to submit 20 cases so let's do an example for me to show you how to do your um, cases in practical <clears throat> So we're here, and remember, I have done six cases, so you can see that here. Um, I can continue if I leave off in the middle anywhere. It will save my case for me to work on it later. So here I am. I can continue working by clicking on the, this button right here, resume, resume where you left off. And I see all my cases done right here. So when you do your cases when you have done 20 cases for each week you are going to take a screenshot of this page and save it on your wordpad and submit that word format into your assignment um, assignment uh, page where you download your assignments into into your d2l right in your into your assignment page in your course so make sure that you take a screenshot of this page for the assignment submission. It will give you the number. Now every week I'm gonna see 20 for the first week, 40 for the next, 60 and then 80 and then 100. You're supposed to submit 100 cases for the whole course. So it's not like you have to go to another module to do another 20 cases. You're doing the same co uh, cases here, just building them up for the assignment submission. So let's begin with the case. <clears throat> I have I clicked on to the number six patient and begin the test now this what you see here I'm going to elaborate a little bit and um, PX stands for procedure the procedure codes come from your CPT book and HICPIX book procedure means exactly what did the doctor do for the patient Let's say he did a drainage of the peritoneal abscess. So what did the doctor do? What is your first word that you want to look up into the CPT book? Drainage. Usually, whatever is the action word is what you're going to use as your main term in the CPT book to find your code. So drainage of the peritoneal abscess or peritoneal abscess drainage you are looking for the drainage. Under drainage, you're going to find peritoneum and abscess in different orders. So remember, PX is the procedure code that you will find in the CPT books, and you're going to assign it right here under number one. You're then going to move on to the modifier. So what is a modifier? A modifier is something that gives you additional information to enhance the details of your procedure code. Let's say the procedure we just did, 
excuse me, it's actually, we don't have two peritoneums, so we only have one peritoneum. Any procedure done that you might say was done on the left side of the body, let's say an arm, uh, left arm, or right arm. To specify the right and the left, you're going to use a modifier, RT for the right side, LT for the left side. And this is where you're going to put your modifiers, let's say left. This procedure that you did here, let's just put a number here, 47020, is your procedure code for the left arm uh, perito left arm abscess drainage. And we're going to put the left LT because the code does not give me that detail. Only if the code is not telling you or does not have the description of finding that information, you're going to put an additional modifier here to let the insurance company know that it was done on the left side because if this is missing the insurance company is not going to reimburse for this for this procedure now we come to come to diagnosis you see how you have four diagnoses right and they have a number one two three four the diagnosis is what did the doctor why the surgery was done so let's go down to the scenario I will expand that now. Remember, you have an operation note here. You are looking for the name of the procedure. You have two procedures given right here. Pre-operative, I'm sorry, this is diagnosis. The procedure is only one, sorry about that. So the procedure is only one, exploratory laparoscopy and open partial cholecystectomy with intraoperative cholangiogram. So if I ask you, what did the doctor do? Because you're looking for one word in your CPT book, along with the additional words that you will find under the main term, under the main word, what is the word that we want from here? What did the doctor do? He did a cholecystectomy, right? So under the cholecystectomy, you're going to look for exploratory, laparoscopy, partial, cholangiogram, everything's going to come under it. Or maybe there are two procedures, I'm not sure. We have to discover that. The diagnosis is preoperative and postoperative. We always choose post-operative because that is more significant of what the procedure was, procedure was done for. <clears throat> you will go to your diagnostic ICD-10 book to find the diagnostic code. <coughs> now, you are going to find the main term again for diagnosis. So what is the diagnosis? What is it that this patient came here for? Cholecystitis. Right, that is the condition, the diagnosis, and that's what you're going to find in your ICD-10 book. So I'm going to do another video to show you how to do, how to find the codes in the CPT and ICD-10. But you're going to put, put down the code here for ICD-10. ICD-10 codes are three digits, followed by an alphabet and sometimes modified by one, two, or three digits after the decimal, right? So you always have a letter first, two digits, two numbers, followed by a decimal, and then it can be either four digits, five digits, six digits, or followed by a seventh alphabet that we will look into further. Now, if there's any other diagnosis written here, you're going to write those down too. What are we writing under the primary one? The primary diagnosis is what the patient came to see the doctor for today, what the patient is having the surgery for. So now this code has a number one on it. <clears throat> and the surgery was done because of the cholecystitis that we just put the procedure here, put the diagnostic code here for. And we're going to put down number one here. So number one, unit number one, associates the procedure here to the diagnosis number one. It is not because of two. Let's say if there was something wrong with the cholecystitis, you're gonna put down two also because these two diagnoses are associated with the procedure done here. So we don't know that yet because we, did, we did, did, did not go through the whole procedure yet, but you have to remember, whatever the diagnosis is associated with that procedure, you're gonna link that link those two diagnoses to the procedure as well. So you're basically linking the diagnosis to the procedure by putting the numbers of the diagnosis here. 
you're not going to have these many procedures in every case. You're not going to have these many diagnoses in this case. Maybe one or two, or maybe one or two diagnoses, or maybe one or two CPT procedures. Okay, so don't worry about that you have to fill out all of these. These are only here to give you enough space if you need it. And after you finish, okay, you submit, all right? I'm not going to submit because I don't have an answer. But as soon as you submit <clears throat> this case, you will see show answers on the top. Make sure you click on the answers, show answers, and review the, um, uh, review the, um, what should I call it? <laughs> the answers, the rationales explaining you what, uh, codes you found and if they were correct or not and how did how did you find these codes okay so they give you they explain you the step-by-step -step directions of how to find those codes and so that will help you look at your mistakes and um, go through the questions again find those answers in the CPT and the diagnostic ICD book and review your mistakes that's the best way to learn coding so don't worry about getting the wrong answers because you will be checking your answers soon. What I need from your assignment is that you attempted the cases. So once you finish doing this, I'm just going to leave here. You're going to submit and find your answers. You're going to give me the, the picture right here. That's it. That's all I need from you is the screenshot of this number here posted as your, announce, posted as your, as your assignment every week. <clears throat> for a grading so don't miss the grading because you don't know how to code here um, you still have to work on answering the questions and learning on your own time but you have to submit the 20 cases for the assignment submission and getting a full grade any questions please keep me posted